Today, we're going to create ourselves a custom Tailwind plugin, and we'll do it directly in our tailwind.config.js. Okay, if you want to code along, make sure you've got your own tailwind.config.js open. Any project will do fine. It could be a React project, Vue, a WordPress theme. As long as you've integrated Tailwind correctly, and you've got this tailwind.config.js open, you're good to code along. So by default, you should see this plugin section right at the bottom. If you don't have that, just add that to your module exports. Now, before we can start writing our plugin, we'll need to import the plugin code from the core Tailwind package. So add that to the top of your tailwind.config file, const plugin require Tailwind CSS plugin. And that's coming from the Tailwind package that you installed through Yarn or through NPM. So let's scroll down to our plugin section now, and we can add our plugin to either of the three sections. In this video, I'm only gonna do two, but you've got add base, add components, and add utilities. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to reference that plugin. So where's this plugin value coming from? Well, that's what we've just imported right at the top of our file, right? Now inside of that, we're just gonna have an anonymous function. And inside of that, we're gonna pass in add base, and theme. Now we will also later pass in add components. And if you wanted to reference utilities, you'll have to pass in add utilities here as well. Okay, let's get our brackets set up for this function. And now we'll reference the section we want to add it to. So that's going to be add base. And we'll just pass in an object inside of that. Now, since base styles typically deal with things like topography, I'm going to target an h1 that I've set up inside of my dummy h index page. And I've also given it the class test, which we'll be using for our component that we'll be writing shortly. We have a look at that on the front end. All we have right now is here goes my h1 text. And we'll inspect that. We can see that there's no styles added to it at this stage. So let's change it. Let's adjust the font size inside of our plugin. We'll go back to our tailwind file. Inside of add base, what are we targeting? Well, we're targeting the h1. And to that, we just need to add in the object. And we're going to say font size. So this is your CSS property you're looking to target. And you use camel case, just like you do for the rest of your Tailwind config file. Now, how do we set this font size? Well, first, we reference this theme. So that theme is available to us because we passed it in over there. And that's part of the plugin, which we imported right there. So hopefully, all of that makes sense. Now that theme is going to give us access to all of the styling inside of Tailwind. So what we can do now is something like this, font size and for Excel. So these are Tailwind defaults. This has nothing to do with CSS, but that's not going to set the font size of our H1 to for Excel. So if we save that and straight away, you can see there's an increase and there it is right there. Font size 2.25 rem. Okay. So that's how you add your base styles, writing a custom plugin. What about a component now? So now we'll do the add component or add components, should I say? And again, we're going to pass in our object. So now we need to add that in as well there. And I'm going to just set something up called test just to keep it as simple as possible. And again, we need that object. And now we assign our CSS values or our properties and values. So let's start off with padding first. And again, we reference the theme. Now you need to know your Tailwind at this stage, so you may have to refer to the docs, but to access uh, the padding is the spacing, and then you've got your different sizes. I'm gonna reference the size 20. So that's effectively P-20 if you were using this in your HTML on the front end as a utility class. Now let's set the background color, and I'm just gonna keep this simple, and I'm gonna reference uh, colors.black. So once more, this is all default Tailwind, uh, make sure you read through the docs if you're not familiar with what you have by default. And then lastly, let's set our text color. So that'll be just color. Again, it's theme, colors.white. All right, so now we should have a component with a CSS class of test, which I'm outputting inside of my index page. And that should have three properties set to it. Padding, background color, and color. And the padding should be whatever padding 20 is. We'll find out shortly. A background color of black and a text color of white. So we'll save that. And there it is right there without the need to refresh because I'm using parcel as my bundler. There's my padding, which is five rem, background color and color. And it's that straightforward, right? And because this is JavaScript, you could write, you can run maps for each whatever you need to do inside of here. 
uh, and you can make it super flexible. And you can also move this to its own file and then simply reference the file inside of your plugins array section.